presented by Historic Redeemer Lutheran Church in Elmhurst, Illinois. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The disciples of John the Baptizer were terrified. Their teacher had been arrested, thrown in prison by King Herod. Yet they knew that the kingdom of heaven was near. John had preached that every day. Yet this good man was in prison. So the disciples of John were sent to Jesus to ask him what was going on. Jesus, who knows all things, knew their doubts and fears, and he comforted them by pointing to all the ways that light was overcoming the darkness. The blind were being made able to see, the deaf to hear, lepers cleansed, and the poor had good news preached to them. Now, only after showing that the kingdom of heaven was indeed at hand, did Jesus explain why terrible things were still happening, like John being arrested. He shows that although the kingdom was being given to them, violent men still sought to seize it through force and violence. That is nothing new, though. Fallen humanity has always tried to take the kingdom of heaven by force. The pages of Scripture are littered with the accounts of this particular kind of violence. Eve reached out her hand and ripped the forbidden fruit from the tree despite God's will. Cain tried to seize the kingdom by violent force when he killed his brother Abel. King Ahab threatened the prophet Elijah with murder, gathering dark storm clouds of destruction over Israel. And in the New Testament, King Herod silenced John the Baptist the only way he knew how, by forcefully arresting John and ultimately beheading him. And the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem would try to put an end to the preaching and miracles of Jesus through the violent hands of Roman torturers and executioners. Fallen humanity has always tried to take hold of the kingdom through violent force. But why? Why this bitter and dark reaction to the kingdom of heaven? Well, because things in this kingdom don't always appear quite right by fallen man's judgment. Cain believed that his own sacrifice was better than Abel's. It seemed to him that it should be that way, so when he was proven wrong, he took matters into his own blood-stained hands. And King Ahab thought that Elijah, prophet of the Lord, should preach the way that he, the ruler, wanted. That's what all the priests of Baal were doing. Herod locked up John and finally ordered his death because John just wouldn't let things lie like everyone else did. He kept kicking up dust over Herod's public sins. The Pharisees and Sanhedrin would put Jesus through a sham trial and execute him on a cross because he didn't fit their expectations. This kingdom, as it was shown through these messengers, wasn't what man thought it should be. And so they reacted the only way that they knew how. Through force, either to bend it to their will or to silence it. All these thought that they knew better what the kingdom of heaven should be about. It should be about their judgments, what they thought was good and right. And so when John the baptizer came, fasting and living in the desert, preaching repentance, they said that was a little too strange, and so he obviously must be possessed by a demon. He didn't fit what they thought the kingdom was about, and so they wrote him off as a crazed lunatic. And when Jesus came, doing the opposite, eating and drinking, he didn't fit what they wanted either. So they called him a glutton and drunkard, a friend of the worst kind of sinners, so that they didn't have to listen to him anymore. No matter what, 
If these messengers of the Lord said anything that was contrary to what was already decided, what was right by the fallen humanity, they'd simply ignore them. They were, as Jesus said, children in the marketplace singing to each other, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. You didn't do what we wanted. You didn't move when we pulled the strings. No matter what, it wouldn't be good enough. Now the reason why this was the case, and honestly still is, is that fallen humanity believes that the kingdom should be about their works, what they're doing, what they're earning, what they think they deserve. And how often do we fall into that trap? We are all too ready to ignore those parts of God's message that we don't like, those things that make us uncomfortable. We write off those who deliver that message, whether they be a prophet, apostle, or preacher. We say things like, well, I like that, but... Or, I agree with this, except... For fallen humans, we think that it should be about us. It should be about us being good enough, trying hard enough, fitting the mold... It should be about what makes sense to us, the way we think it should be. And if anyone should disagree, then we move to seize the kingdom, to seize what we assumed was ours by force. Now, this can be through literal violence and bloodshed, or it can be through cold, hard words that we use to beat down anyone who stands in our way. Now, sometimes this passive violence only takes place in our hearts but it takes place nonetheless. Thus, the long, bloody history that Jesus spoke of today, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. But God has a better way. He knows that our scraping and striving, our assumptions, only end up in bitter frustration, like Cain or Ahab. Or they end up in self-certain arrogance that we're doing fine, like Herod and the Pharisees. And so God presents his kingdom in a different way. Not a thing to be grasped, but a thing that's given. God gives his kingdom freely as a gift, received only by faith. You see, for all our efforts, we don't measure up, usually not even by our own standards, if we're being honest. And that's what St. Paul writes in our epistle reading from Romans today, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That goes for Everyone. All have sinned and fall short. That means your annoying coworker, your merciless boss, the antagonist who's forever a thorn in your side, and yes, even you. And so the law and the prophets, so John the Baptist and Jesus preach to you, repent. Turn away from those self-chosen ways. Turn away from trying to seize the kingdom of heaven by force or will. Turn away from assuming that you know what the kingdom is all about. We have to come to receive, we have to come to realize that it's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom freely. That it could only ever be given freely as a gift. The kingdom of God is a gift. That means that you don't have to reach out your hand to seize it. You don't have to prove yourself worthy of it. It's something that God wants to give, and he wants to give it to you. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to make the right decision or even choose to accept it. 
You don't have to make a down payment by doing the right thing X percent of the time from now on. No, it's already paid for through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation, that is a payment, by his blood to be received in faith. You don't pay for it. You don't earn it. It's a gift to be received by faith. In fact, what we celebrate on this Reformation Sunday is the emphasis on that very thing. God's kingdom is received only through faith. This free gift, the kingdom of of heaven, God's gracious, loving rule over your life, is received simply by believing that he's given it to you. But can it really be that easy? Well, there's nothing easy about faith. Faith calls us to fight against our every instinct to reach out and grab the kingdom by force, to take it with our own two hands, with our own willpower or intelligence or goodness. But that's what faith does. It tunes out the violent roaring of our fallen nature, and it looks instead to what God has promised. It doesn't grasp. It receives. Faith believes what he says, even if everything else is screaming the opposite. So yes, if that's easy, which it isn't, then it's as easy as that. It's simply faith alone. This gift is for you. No matter what shortcomings you have, God has given his kingdom to you. No matter what you think of yourself, God has said that you are his child and heir. No matter what sins you've committed, Jesus has died to wash you clean from them. No matter what you face in the future, the kingdom of heaven waits for you. Don't presume to seize the kingdom of heaven through your own forceful strivings or efforts. That's not how it's obtained. Those who grasp at the tightest in the clutches of their own works will find it slip from their grasp every time. Rather, receive it as a gift. Jesus is setting it gently into your open hands of faith. This is what we celebrate today, this Reformation Sunday. This is what gives us our confidence and joy. Christ has given us the kingdom, and it remains ours forever. In the name of Jesus alone, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us next week.